Are you serious? Are you serious, guys? Behind me, you're looking at an actual picture of the blood moon in Turkey, and it was right behind this mosque. And to, and in between these two spirals of this mosque in Turkey, a massive blood moon, and it was very red. Now, in America, the, the moon in different places was reddish. Some places was more orange, but it was in Turkey, a blood moon and w- over this mosque. And what significance could that be seeing that last night was Purim, the night that Haman uh, tried to hang Mordecai, uh, the, 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 the cousin of the queen, Esther. And she, of course, had everybody praying and fasting and saved them all. Uh, and so Haman hung from his own gallows. Well, last night, the blood moon happened again on the night of Purim. But guess what happened? The United Nations voted to to shut down Israel, and the Biden administration abstained from the vote instead of vetoing it, opening the door for the U.N. to, to take a run at Israel. I'll tell you all about that. It happened last. Are you serious? It's a bad moon rising. Let me tell you what else is going on, though. First of all, first, uh, and there's a lot of other stuff. A shout out right now for www.pastorpaulgold.com. That's www.pastorpaulgold.com. If you keep your money in a bank account, listen up. Your savings could be at risk. The banking system is once again under an extreme stress and uh, if after last year's banking crisis, the dangers are clearer than ever. Car loans are defaulting. Credit card debt is ballooning. Commercial real estate is at the brink of collapse. These aren't just red flags. They're the sounds of a financial ticking time bomb. But there is a safe way, an easier way to help protect your future. It's with gold. That's right, gold. Gold is a biblical currency. Gold is outside the government's reach. It's safe from economic policies and jeopardizing your wealth. Gold allows you to lock in today's value in the face of tomorrow's uncertainty. Don't wait for the next headline. Not Don't wait for a stock market crash or a bank run. Go right now to www.pastorpaulgold.com or pick up the phone and call them at 877-646-5347. That's 877-646-5347. And tell them Pastor Paul sent you. They're giving away this one quarter of an ounce gold coin free for everyone that rolls over that 401k or sets up a gold or silver IRA. Get it done. Uh, Do it today. (coughs) <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, here we go. So let's talk about the betrayal, the absolute outright betrayal. Oh, and oh, by the way, just got off. The, just got a text a minute ago. Our book is shipping right now. So a lot of you are going to get your book tomorrow and Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. It's going to be flooding out there to all the people who pre-ordered. And just an hour or so ago, the Revelation nine one. Went number one again, this time in new releases in spiritual warfare. We had not been number one in spiritual warfare, but we are right now. It just happened. We went to number one in hot new releases in Amazon category of spiritual warfare. And, and really, and the guy that the book that we actually leapfrogged, which is a great book. Uh, living in the days of deception by Jack Hibbs, and you guys know he and he's this his book is new, and uh, it is a great book. But we just leapfrogged him right now, and of course that it changes as periodically. But we're proud to announce that that it went number one, hot new release, uh, just about an hour ago. I can't wait to get you guys to get your book and start putting reviews on line on. Go back to uh, Amazon and start putting your reviews on there. Tell them what you think about the book, okay? We would really appreciate that. All right. Let's face it. There's a real problem here, guys. There's a serious problem what's just happened, uh, and that is literally, literally, um, they, the blood moon was last night, and they were trying to uh, literally, uh, next thing to lynching, uh, Netanyahu, the UN, the United Nations. Let me just read to you what they're saying now. It's just a, it's a it's a terrible 
reality. But this is the world we're living in. And I think whenever we start watching these things, um, uh, I, sometimes you just think they're not going to stop, are they? And then you look at the Bible and it says, well, the Bible says they're not going to stop. This was an incredible uh, vote last night, and the United States allowed it to happen. Israel has just now canceled its high-level talks that were supposed to take place uh, tomorrow in Washington, D.C., after the, the United States abstained from the ceasefire vote at the United Nations Security Council. In other words, there's five permanent members, and, the, and that's the United States, Russia, China, Great Britain, and France. If any of the five say no, then the, they cannot take the resolution to the floor to vote at the General Assembly. And, of course, China, Russia, U.K., and France all said, yes, let's go vote about it. And all the United States had to do was, was say veto, and it doesn't even, there is no vote. If, if we stand with Israel, there's no vote. But last night, President Joe Biden had his United Nations representatives say abstain. We're not going to say yes. We're not going to say no. We're just going to let it happen. Well, why don't you just go ahead and join them? Because that's what you just did. And the Biden administration is allowing the U.N. now to take a vote on whether they're going to force the ceasefire on Israel. Well, how are you going to force it? Are you going to send in troops? Are you going to take down? Are you going to shut down? Are you going to pass a bunch of sanctions against Israel? Are you going to start disarming them like Mike from the world said? Guys, here's what they're saying right now. In Jerusalem, the United Nations Security Council voted 14 to 0 because the U.S. abstained. They voted 14 to nothing in favor of a resolution demanding a ceasefire in Gaza for the rest till the end of Ramadan. And Ramadan ends on April 9th, the day after the solar eclipse. I mean, just throw that. So on the night of the blood moon, they vote, go get Israel and, and, and keep the hammer on Israel till after the day of the solar eclipse, the final day of Ramadan. The United States abstained from the vote, clearing the way for the measures to pass. The U.S. decision to abstain drew a swift response from Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, who canceled his visit by an Israeli delegation that had been set to travel to Washington, D.C. for talks on Israel's planned military operation to take down Rafah. He was, go he was going to Washington to sit down with the United States and say, okay, we're going to take Rafah. How do you guys want to help us do it? Well, he said, forget that, because you guys just opened the door to shut us down. Prime Minister Netanyahu made it clear last night that if the U.S. withdraws from its principal position, he will not send the Israeli delegation to the U.S. and share the war plan in light of the change in the American position. Prime Minister Netanyahu decided that the delegation would not go, of course. And the prime minister's office said in a statement, there's no need sending them. The State Department spokesman, Matthew Miller, said that Benjamin Netanyahu's statement was a bit surprising and unfortunate. Are you an idiot, Matthew Miller? Are you an idiot? Are you serious? It's not surprising. If the U.S. don't stand with you, you're going to go share the war plans with them? The U.S. Abs, uh, abs, abstained was seen as a sign of a growing rift between two very close allies, the United States of America and the nation of Israel. Washington is urging Israel not to launch an offensive in Rafah where more than a million Palestinians are sheltering. Israel says it has to go in to destroy the remaining Hamas battalions that are hidden in the bunkers and are living among the people. The high-level delegation led by Strategic Affairs Minister Ron Dermer and the National Security Advisor was due to meet with Joe Biden's administration officials to hear the U.S. concerns over Rafa operation, and to discuss the strategy. Now, despite the cancellation, a planned visit by Israeli's defense minister, Yove Gallant, will continue. So Gallant's going to go. He's the top Israeli's defense minister. He's going go to his, he's gonna go to America, but they're not bringing the whole team. Gallant was in Washington today to meet with Secretary of State Anthony Blinken 
and Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin and National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan, the th- you know, the three blind mice who work for Joe Biden. The ceasefire resolution, and the reason I say that, it's three blind mice, is, it's, is, is they act like they can't see what's going on. They're blind somehow. Um, and uh, the ceasefire resolution calls for an immediate, unconditional release of all the hostages taken captive by Hamas. Well, okay, on October 7th. So they're saying, we want, we, we, will do a, we want a ceasefire. We demand a ceasefire, and Hamas give all the hostage back. Well, Hamas is saying, no, we're not giving none of the hostage back. We're not surrendering. We're not giving up the hostages. But, yeah, tell Israel to do a ceasefire. And Israel's saying, why would we do a ceasefire? They're not going to give us the hostages. We're going in to destroy them. We're going in to finish them off. That's uh, So why wouldn't, how hard is this? <clears throat> how hard is this to understand? Where do we stand, America? Where do we stand? The ceasefire resolution. Well, you better stand with Israel. God says, don't even touch the apple of my eye. And you better not even think about splitting the land or parting the land. But right now, according to the Biden administration, they're doing both. The ceasefire resolution calls for an immediate unconditional release of all the hostages, captives, taken captive by Hamas during the October 7th attack on Israel that killed 1,200 people, butchered them, burned babies, slaughtered these people. Israel's military offensive in Gaza is responsible for the attack and which the Palestinians say that 32,000 people have died. Ramadan is set to end in just over two weeks, April 9th. So why tell Israel they have to stop the war now? Israel's not going to stop the war because of Ramadan. I can promise you that. I don't care what you threaten them with. And uh, because... It was their people that were butchered. It was their people that were brutalized. It is still their people. It's, and plus, there's some Americans that are hostage right now, Joe. Mr. President, there are Americans hostage. Of course, you left Americans behind in Afghanistan. Of course, you're leaving Americans behind right now in Haiti. Of course, you're leaving you don't have it, you haven't done anything to help rescue the Americans that are hostage in Gaza. Monday's vote followed several failed attempts by the Security Council at brokering a ceasefire resolution, including one as recently as three days ago. The U.S. has supported calls for a ceasefire only if they are were directly connected to the release of some 130 hostages still in captivity under a deal being negotiated by diplomats from four nations. This resolution further explicitly recognizes the painstaking non-stop negotiations being conducted by the, the governments of Egypt and Israel and Qatar and the United States to try to achieve such a release in the context of a ceasefire, which would also create space to surge more life-saving humanitarian assistance for Palestinian civilians and to help build something more enduring, according to Secretary of State Anthony Blinken. But because of the final text of the resolution did not include key language, we view as essential, notably a condemnation of Hamas, we could not support it. No, that's true. You couldn't support it, but you didn't reject it either. So you might as well have supported it. But because by abstaining, you allow the other 14 members to vote Yes, and to take it to the, the floor of the U.N. where you know 80% of the nations are against Israel and have been since Israel existed, really. So, and, and uh, Jewish anti-Semitism has gone on for thousands of years. So, we're, we're getting, we're getting, uh, you know, and we see through this stuff. And, and, I mean, I can see through it a mile away. The, the, the listeners of this broadcast, the, the, the supporters of this ministry, the viewers of this uh, information here, they, we, everyone can see it. And we know that there's some uh, that are out there 
that uh, have a total different position, total different position, and have since Israel was attacked. Immediately they jumped on Israel's case. Some of them uh, that are supposed to be, I think they said they were part Israel supporters, even you know, but they they don't seem to show it at all. So you know, I don't know. What do you want me to do? They have a different opinion. We have a different opinion. I I covered in this book. And, and here's the opinion I have. What does the Bible say? I take the opinion with, of God. I take the opinion of God, the creator. I take what he said in Zechariah chapter 2. Don't touch the apple of my eye. I take what he said about Jerusalem will become this cup of trembling, this burdensome stone for all people. All that burden himself, themselves with it will be broken into pieces. Though the whole world would come against Israel. I take what he said in Joel chapter 3 when he said he would bring the whole world down to the valley of Jehoshaphat there in Jerusalem and he would plead with the world not to part the land, that not to do this to his land or to his heritage Israel, to his people. I take the Lord for what he says. But I also know that prophecy cannot be stopped. I can sit here and rant and rave and jump up and down all I want, but I can't stop prophecy. I don't want to see an antichrist ever set on the seat of and declare himself as God and implement a mark of the beast system, imprisoning Christians and and killing believers, taking peace from the earth. I don't ever want to see an antichrist with the mark of the beast and the false prophet. I am against it. I don't want to ever see it. I'm against it happening. And I'm against all those who would try to make it happen. But I can't stop prophecy. I can't stop what God has already said. That it is eventually going to happen. So I stand on the, I stand on the wall again tonight. I stand on the wall pleading with the world to repent of your sins and give your life to Jesus Christ. I stand on this wall begging people to please come to the Lord. Stand with Israel, but come to Jesus Christ. Get things right with God because certainly the signs of his coming are everywhere. But let me say, say something to those who would come against Israel. You're going to do what you're going to do. But God has already promised what he's going to do. The dry bones are rattling. Remember what Ezekiel said in 37. God would make a mighty army out of dry bones. And his covenant would be established forever and ever. And the kingdom would have no end. Saturday was silent. And surely it was through. Since when has impossible ever stopped you? Friday's disappointment is Sunday's empty tomb. Since when has impossible ever stopped you? Yes, it is true. The red heifers came from the path of the eclipse. Yes. This is the sound of Rockwall, Texas. Right there near Dallas. This is the praise, make a dead man walk again. Here we go. Open the grave, I'm coming out. I'm gonna live, gonna live again. This is the sound of dry bones rattling.
My God is able to save and deliver and heal and restore anything that he wants to. Just ask the man who was thrown on the bones of Elisha if there's anything that he can do. Just ask the stone that was rolled at the tomb. Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Prophesy and say to them, thus saith the Lord God, behold, my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up from your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. Then you shall know that I am the Lord and I spirit in you and I will place you in your own land and you shall live I will place you in your own land you shall live 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 are you Serious. That's so right. That is so right. It is so right. Our book went number one again today for the fifth time. It's uh, number one hot new seller at, at Amazon right now in the category spiritual warfare. And what a good time for that to happen. The, the book is shipping today everywhere, shipping tomorrow. You f- folks, all of you who pre-ordered, you'll be getting your books tomorrow, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. It depends where you live in the country, but they're all being released at once but i want to read from the book uh and and order five copy and i've been saying that and now i'm dead serious because there's so much in it is coming to pass right now uh the book is so powerful that even kevin sorbo endorsed it hercules yeah yes yes of course you guys know him from uh some of the other christian movies he's been doing here recently as well but let me let me read what i wrote just a little bit in chapter 12 of the, of the book, Revelation 9-11. It's called The Third Temple, the Antichrist, and the Second Coming. Let no man deceive you by any means, for the day will not come unless there's a falling away comes first and the man of sin is revealed and the son of perdition who opposes and exalts himself above all that's called God or that is worship so that he sits as God in the temple of God showing himself that he is God. That's 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, 
verses 3 and 4. And I wrote in the chapter, In a dream, I, Paul, I had a dream on December 3rd, 2019. I saw the Antichrist, a man in his late 30s or early 40s. With a thin build and dark hair, he walked into the newly constructed third temple in Jerusalem in Israel. As he strode into the main seating area, I saw many Jews dressed in ultra-Orthodox attire waiting. It occurred to me that they didn't realize that the man was the Antichrist. I then saw him walk behind the veil of the Holy of Holies. He part the veil exposing the Ark of the Covenant, Israel's most sacred object, built by Moses himself at God's direction to hold the tablets of stone of the Ten Commandments, which were inscribed, and the place from which God manifested his Shekinah glory. Astonishingly, I saw the man stand on top of the Ark of the Covenant in the middle of the mercy seat, between the wings of the golden cherubs. He turned to the people and said, Where is your God? He paused, and then he said, I am your God. At that point, the Jews in the temple realized that the man was not their leader, but the Antichrist. We believe this shocking act of desecration in the third temple, known as the abomination that causes desolation prophesied by Daniel in chapter 9, verse 27, will come midway through the tribulation period. Shortly after Apollyon is released from the bottomless pit, along with 200 million demonic horsemen who kill a third of humanity, and by then the whole world will be crying out for someone to stop the horrors. But the demons answer to the Antichrist. Dr. F. Kenton Bashore who has now died, wrote this. When the Antichrist breaks the covenant with Israel in the middle of the tribulation in Daniel 9, 27, he launches a war of persecution against the Jews, as it says in Revelation chapter 12, verse 13. They flee from Satan and the Antichrist, and through divine intervention, many of them escape into the wilderness where they are protected for 42 months. Revelation 12, verse 14. Guys, that's just a a little over a page of the book. This is where we go with all the documentation, scriptures, prophecies, prophetic words by different speakers, folks that I've interviewed and I've met or Troy's interviewed and he's met or have written uh, prophetic words. We pull it all together for you. This is the hour. It's happening. It's happening. What I wrote down is happening right now. I'll be back tonight with some more information. I feel good about what happened to Trump today. They cut his requirement down in half from well, more than that, from $454, billion, or $454 million bond to $175 million, and they gave him 10 days. He said, I can do it. I'll, ta- I'll pay that. And that gives him, that holds his position. They can't take his ta- the, tw- the Trump Towers, and he can appeal that. So it's sort of like a savings account for him because he's going to win this in the end and probably get that money back. But, boy, thank you. Thank you to the appellate court uh, on that one because it was just ridiculous. Guys, there's a lot more going on. I'm telling you, it's getting wicked in high places. I'll be back later this evening with more right here. Oh, and I just posted an interview. Uh, Derek Gilbert from Skywatch TV, he interviewed me and Troy Anderson, my co-author, and it's about a 45-minute interview, and it's on Patreon. So those of you who are members of my Patreon channel, go there, watch it. It's really, really good. It's about the end times. I'll be back. God bless. Give your life to Jesus Christ, folks. I'm telling you. It was a blood moon last night over the mosque in Turkey. Are you serious? Dear Impurim? during the betrayal.